So hello everyone, we are sketching this today. It's a, a busy scene taken around rush hour um, in Cambridge. It's, it's Magdalen Street heading towards the bridge at the north of the city centre. There's a lot of um, interesting perspective in this scene with this sort of wobbly, slightly hilly street going off in the distance. And we're going to be thinking about how we can get that with our pen, um, thinking about different ways of simplifying that, as well as adding these punches of colour. Um, as ever, if you if you find this interesting, or if you don't, or if you think there's things that are great, or things you would have done differently, let me know in the comments. It's always interesting to hear people's perspectives. So hello everyone, it's Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch, and today we're going to be sketching this interesting scene from Cambridge. It's um, Magdalen Road in Cambridge, just heading down to a little bridge of the river. Lots of interesting old houses, and some interesting perspective and things to work with. So how are we going to get this scene down? Well, well, let's just go for it and find out. I'm going to be using my um, Lamy Safari fine tip fountain pen with carbon X ink, platinum carbon X ink, um, which is nice waterproof ink. And I'm going to start, we're going to be doing this over both pages. I'm going to start with this sort of building on the corner because that's going to set the whole scale. And we're going to be doing this as ever, nice and loose, getting those big shapes in. So just starting just by laying out the kind of dimensions of our house here, trying to hold the pen nice and loose and just pull out important shapes and features as I sort of see them. And then with this sort of weird perspective and hill going on, what I think is the most simple, effective way of grabbing the rest of the scene is probably instead of focusing on shapes, focusing on the outline. So we can see this sort of outline swooping around. So what I'm going to do is instead of shapes, and normally I say shapes, 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 instead of shapes we're going to just go along and pick out that horizon line. And that means that we can sort of get a basis for everything instead of having to think really hard how big is this square supposed to be where's this square supposed to go oh is this square in the right angle we can kind of just grab everything and i'm not going to pretend that i'm counting all of these chimneys but what i'm doing is getting that general shape and that idea in and if someone would like to count the chimneys and tell me how right or wrong i am uh, feel free i'll be very interested genuinely interested to know. Maybe I'll even do it myself now because I'd quite like to know can I just sort of get away with just doing this kind of outline. And, and artistically I think I can. I think it works really well. Just getting this feel and I know there's a void there now but what we can now do is we can work backwards and we can go well this is pretty much the narrowest point because it's the furthest away and we can start just building in the bottom outline And there you go, so now this funky perspective, instead of building up shape by shape by shape, has just been built up very quickly with the, the outline. And now we can pick out the next important shape, which is how do we separate the houses from the sort of roofs? Well, that's easy. So it's kind of, it's almost another outline. But what we're also going to have to do is to sort of pay a little bit of attention to where we've decided these chimneys are going to be. And there we go. So now we've got houses in a row. And now we can just sort of start dividing them. And I'm just trying to take some cues and we can do things like if we decide, if you look along, a few of these roofs are high, a few of them are low. Well, you know what? We can lower some of these roofs. Easy to do. As long as we keep our lines nice and light, it's really easy to bring things down, move them up. So now we've got these row of houses, we've got the higgledy-piggledy roofs. What else do you want to add in? Well, a few details here and there. There's lots of windows and things. I'm going to suggest we don't need to count the windows like we didn't need to count the chimneys. What we can do is just get a feel. Where are these windows? There's some on this face, some here. And there's a lot going on down underneath as well. And we can sort of just follow along and get these kind of window shapes in and we don't need to overdo it. There's a lot of detail, a lot of character just coming from the perspective, coming from the chimneys, coming from the roofs. So that for now, plenty of detail for me. Let's just move along 
and here there's not really much perspective going on it's a flat street facing us so actually I'm going to suggest this time for me at least and the way my brain works I find it easier to start now just using shapes again so for me it's about just understanding yourself and bringing in those shorthands the quickest easiest most simple ways of you knowing that you can do a scene in a certain way so here I'm just sort of focusing on we've got these roof shapes we've got where they're overlapping we've got this sort of the shapes of the uh, floors of the houses got some nice uh, nice traffic lights what a funny thing to say but I think they do add something so I do mean they're nice traffic lights and then we can start some of our little details here as well and just getting that feel for what's going on and a, a nice touch is always of course just getting that um, pavement in it gives a flow of the street and pavements are 3D so providing a sort of second line um, into it and getting in that close pavement as well so this kind of opens the street up it lets you know what you're looking at what your perspective your viewpoint is now the next interesting bit is all of these people and there are a lot of people I can suggest we just do them as one thing called shape based people so we've got the circle we've got the triangle we've got a reverse triangle and that's the body of, a, of our person who's sort of standing at the back here there's a few like that so we can just go around and get our, our people walking around and it's just getting the idea of this street's really busy it was actually I took this I had to um, there's a lot of train problems this day so I had to cycle from uh, Cambridge a surprisingly long way to get um, to get picked up <laughs> rather than just cycling a couple of miles and going to the right station but as a result I'm cycling through Russia and there's all these people out and about we've also got these bikes um, so how are we going to do the bikes well we've got bikes with people on of course but I do like to start with the bike in the, the in the bike with people situation so we've got the frame got a wheel got another wheel and we've got the accoutrement and then we can paste on top of our, our bike we can suddenly pop our purse and we can just repeat that process just trying to keep the heads uh, it's relatively level these heads are at different heights I'm not sure if that's strictly accurate um, but with the sort of perspective and the the hill of the street people's heads will be higher and higher um, so I've actually accidentally started with the person here that's okay for me it just makes it a little bit more difficult um, to get the sort of feel of the bike the frame of the bike right not impossible um, especially given that we're just doing a nice loose sketch but for me just starting with the bike frame the reason I started with the head is because I was trying to place the head and from placing the head I can sort of work out the rest where the bike's going to be but I don't think uh, it's not my normal way normally I prefer to start with the bike I'm sure many people will find it easier the other way around but there we go so there's our, our bikes in now we've also got lots of cars um, they're mostly in the distance so I'm just going to sort of suggest them with these kind of the shape based approach again a little car poking its head in there I'm going to leave that one out I'm just going to sort of pop in these kind of rectangles which are car suggestive rather than definite cars and then we've basically built up our whole scene in just a few minutes really so if we go around we can finalize a few of our wobbly lines we can check if there's any extra details we want to to add there's a little sort of extra window here for example which might be a nice detail maybe you want a couple more bits of texture in there but I think that's broadly done so let's move on to our colors now in this scene the sky is rather interesting isn't it so let's start by working out how we can bring out that interesting sky I'm actually going to move to a bigger brush because we're working on what's essentially an A4 piece of paper here across two sides this is a size 2 mop brush 
I'm just noting where the big colours are in the sky. So we've got a big blue area, um, and then we've got a big sort of darker area with some yellows. So my blue is going to be a mix of phthalo blue and cobalt, and we just pop that in, let it move around, do its thing. Then we've got this sort of darker area, so let's just use some Van Dyke brown mixed in with a little bit of that blue. That's not dark enough, so I'm going to add even a little bit of lunar black, which should produce some really nice granulations and effects in that sky. And we can bring the blue over a bit. And we can sort of wash it down. And then we can also, now if we take a cleanish brush, we can then link those colours up. And we're going to let them merge because there is this sort of white edge between them, but it is only an, a white edge. There's a lot of colour and a lot of tone and things going on in that sky. Got these lovely yellows that we were talking about, so let's just start touching those in. So this yellow is a bit of Hansa yellow medium, and they kind of flow through the sky in this sort of pushing out way, don't they? There's even a little hint up here. And then those same yellows are reflected down. Do you see the glint on all of these buildings? So let's just use that same mix of colours and just pull it down. Then these blues, I'm just going to pop them in and let them wash down. So we've got a bit of continuity. I'm going to start just letting those things mellow, move around. There's lots of water, lots of movement. So I'm now going to just start by coming in and finding the tones. We've got the light side, then we've definitely got a sort of darker side over here. So a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of Lunar Black, and a little bit of just moving that around. I don't want it too dark, but I want it different, definitely different. Now we can keep moving around, so a bit more of our blue. Each time we're doing this we might want to deepen our colours a little bit more, just as we get a bit more confident with what's going on. We can get some of these blues moving around in our shadow as well. And just letting these effects do their own thing. And kind of going for a loose glaze of colour. That's Well, that's my aim anyway. We've got these lovely reddy tones, so perhaps a little bit of lunar brown and a touch of alizarin crimson, and we can get those reddy tones moving around our roofs as well. And just all we want is movement, a bit of fun, a bit of energy going on. Then there's lots of shadows as well, and don't forget to bring out those shadows, and we can use these same ready tones as, as shadow colours. And bring out a little bit more of our shadows on this side and these windows. Now you can see that as I'm touching in, because it's all very liquidy, things are moving a long way. So at some point I need to make a decision that I'm going to let things dry or just finish. I think in this instance I'm going to let things dry and then we can come in and we can add a few more dollops of sort of interest, brighter colours and things like that. Just a tiny bit more movement and while things are still nice and wet we can add splashes in to just get a bit more of that kind of texture in a few places as well. So there we go. We'll let this initial wash dry and then we'll come back and see what kind of interest we can add on top. So you can see mostly dried now. We've got lots of interesting textures, particularly where we've added these splashes and things. And now it's time just to sort of tighten things up a bit, get a little bit of um, bit more structure going on, I think. So how are we going to do that? Well, a bit more of our colours, still nice and loose, but less water and that means we can sort of place our colours and be confident that's where they're going to pretty much stay. We still use these same sort of varieties of bright 
punchy colours to to lay out our sort of different features. So these these same ready tints in the in the walls. We can actually introduce, I think, a bit more blue into these shadows down here, so that we've got these lovely like shadowed buildings. And we're still going to let things move together, just in a more controlled manner, just with less water on the page. Got all our people here as well. I'm going to try because they've kept quite well out of the colour. I'm going to try and keep a few of them as little bits of negative space sort of standing out against all the sort of madness going on in the background. And then pull out little bits of dark for these windows for shadows underneath roofs and things like that. We don't want to spend too long doing this sort of next level of of stuff but just enough to bring out a bit more of a punch bring out a bit more structure so just add a, a couple of touches sit back add a couple more if 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 needed if wanted if if you think the image can sort of take it and then we're starting to think so i think there's enough going on now in this general image we're starting to think where's our real punches coming from this is where things like, I love putting a little bit of red or orange onto chimneys and suddenly you've got these kind of interesting highlights, a couple of little reflections of that orange in other places as well, even in windows. And then colours like, um, got a, a lovely bright cobalt blue, can be a nice way of just emphasising a couple of people for example. And having dotted in those colours, we want to make sure that our line work hasn't been completely covered. So we just can move those colours around if necessary. Nice yellows as well for some of these cyclists. Nice easy way of just highlighting points of interest. And of course we can always add a few splashes just to... I mean, I've, I have comments sometimes saying they're, they're great fun. Sometimes people say, I don't understand why you add splashes. They look like mistakes. Well, for me, they are a nice way of sort of bringing things together. If there's these big negative spaces, it kind of brings everything together. If you've added these little punches of colour in your image, having little punches of random colour elsewhere can be really interesting. We can go in and we can soften and move some of these splashes if we think there's too many. So we can just go in and certainly create different textures out of them or if you go in with a tissue you can probably lift them completely. But we're just going to let that dry one more time and then we can add a little bit more pen work just to find the line. So here we are mostly dry, not entirely but mostly and what can we do? Last little touches with our pen just to take it onto another level. Um, so let's have a little, little look and a little play. So We've got our people, they're really obvious things that we can just bring out, make a little bolder. Don't need to bring out the whole bike, but just aspects of it. Got these other people as well, which we've now given these these sort of punches of colour. So quite nice, I think, to as well as having them as a punch of colour, to give them a, a more distinct outline. We could add more people in if we wanted as well. So don't feel limited by the initial sketch. Don't don't let that stop you doing something if you think it's gonna add. And here, same with our other cyclists in the foreground. And this just bold and line work just really lifts them and brings them forward. We could just bring out a few key lines here as well and we can also get a bit more of an understanding of the sort of amount that's going on in these shop fronts. Because there really are a lot of things, a lot of details going on behind here which we didn't sketch in, we didn't need to, but just getting an idea of the busyness can be quite nice. We can suggest windows we didn't count or bother with earlier. And we can just bring out that initial horizon line that we found, not horizon line, the uh, sort of silhouette outline that we found. And I think that's probably enough of adding detail. A couple of things that are fun always to add it. There's a couple of sort of 
lampposts going on, aren't there? And we can add the ones which are there, we can invent them, we can move them around. Um, so we've added a, lamp, a lamppost here. There's also these, these lights, they sort of faded a little bit. Um, we can just maybe even make them a little bit bigger and a little bit bolder. And just have one last look, is there anything else you want to add? And I think actually we're good now, we've got lots going on. It's a really interesting sketch, filled with life, it's very busy. We've got the people, we've got the perspective, got the colour. So let's just leave it there. Um, so this is this is the finished sketch, I guess. Don't forget to, to sign it. And if you've enjoyed this, um, please do hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you think.